So in these standard controls, let's cover few common controls initially. Like for the basic input and output, we have some controls which we can use in a frequent basis to take an input from the user. So here is the list like we can start with text box which will be used for taking the text values from the user. That value can be taken in a normal text box or in a password format or in a multi-line text box for the big data. Similarly, we have label in which you can set some text from the very beginning or at the runtime as well. Button, link button and image button are the various form of the buttons which will be different in the appearance but will perform the similar type of actions. Hyperlink is basically used for navigating means from one page to another. So you can just set the navigate URL of that control and you can start traversing amongst the pages. Checkbox and radio buttons are used for the choices. If you want user to go for the multiple choice, then you can put a checkbox or if for a single choice, it can opt the radio button. Apart from that, whenever it is required to take a date format value, the calendar control can be used. Whenever you want a date for any particular purpose, we can simply go for calendar and can also perform some arithmetic operations with the date. Literal is somewhat similar to the label that is used for setting the text but majorly we will use literal at the runtime. During the implementation, we will discuss the difference between the label and the literal control as well. So let's get started with the practical implementation of these common controls in the standard control section of ASP.NET. So now let's start with the text box control which we will find inside this standard control section of toolbox and here alphabetically you will find T text box all right now we'll have to select the control and then right click and come to properties apart from that you can also just select and press F4 from your keyboard which will bring you to the property window of this text box control doesn't matter which control you are working with it is actually a very good practice to rename your controls accordingly like here there is an ID property in all the controls here you can simply uh, give a logical name like txt underscore let's say username so basically I can use this particular text box for taking the username into it now if you are not interested in taking the small text like a single line text box like name or something you can also change the way of taking the value that is from the text mode and here by default it's single line you can make it to multi line you can just drag the edges and uh, you can just give any particular size of that and here itself in the properties you will also get the height and width property along with that you can also make the text mode as password so once you will uh, make it as a password you will be able to take the text box kind of value when you see max length property as zero that means it will take as many as number but it is a good practice to set the maximum length because in the database when you will be submitting the value of a particular text box it would be having a size so here by setting the max length property you can actually restrict a user to enter any value more than the size of the database column if you want you can also disable the text box programmatically like here there is a property called enabled which is true by default but if you want you can just make it false now after that you can also make the text box read only by setting the property read only to true all right so in read only you will be able to copy the value from the text box if programmatically you are writing any but otherwise you will not be able to change or write anything in the text box tooltip can be used as a help text which user will see at the execution time for example if I'll say enter password here and I will execute this one page so as soon as I'll put the mouse over it it will say enter password this is nothing but a tooltip and when I start entering the value it is looking like a password format which will take maximum of 20 characters if I'll enter more uh, if I'll 
keep pressing the keys it will not accept any value after that so this is the max length property which we have already set for this text box apart from that you can also disable the auto complete property of a text box if you don't want any auto complete options to be there in the case of secured values like if you are making a payment online and you are entering the card number in those particular case you can actually disable the auto complete type value and right after that, that you can also see auto post back in auto post back basically we will be making my text box capable of posting the page on the server side by default it is false but it is true by default for the buttons which we have already noticed so here if you want to make the post back from the text box you can just make the auto post back property to true and then after when I'll double click here you can see text change so what I'll do I will simply say response dot write inside the text change event and here I will say welcome or rather than welcome like password and then I will write the value of the password that is uh, txt username dot text alright since it's a username let's uh, remove the password property from there it will not be logical we'll just make it a single line alright and uh, here also we'll say enter user name and here also I will say welcome means whatever username you will enter I'll just welcome that so let's see how it works so here I will start writing the name let's say Anadi as soon as I will uh, blur the focus from this text box that event will be fired and here you can see welcome Anadi that's the value taken from the text box if I'll not set the true to auto post back the text box will not be able to send the post to the server side send the page to the server side and this event will not take place let's see that in an example so I'm just making the default value as false and let's re-execute this one so I will enter any value and even if I'll uh, make it blur you see nothing happens right because now my post uh, my text box is not able to post the page on the server side so this is about the text box control now let's discuss about the label here you can see there is a label control in which you can set to any text like uh, enter username while creating the form and after that you can actually put some text box or some other control right so you can use this label control in order to pass the messages either static or dynamically if you want to change the value of any label at the runtime you can easily do that like for example here I take a button on the click of the button let me remove this one as the text box is gone alright so here in the button click I'll just say label one dot text is equal to user name alright so let's execute this one so either you can set the any value of the property at the compile time at the means at the design time or at the runtime as you can see as soon as I click the button the value of this text box got changed apart from that you will find the other properties related to the appearance which will be exactly same one more property which you can find here in the accessibility which is uh, specific to the label control that is the associated control ID that means if I will choose like text box 1 and let's see what happens there so since this text box is associated with the label if I will click over this text box obviously it will get a focus but even if I will click on the label you can see the text box got the focus because now this label is associated with this text box control now let's get started with the three buttons here that is first one is the normal button which we have seen several times then after we'll find something like a hyperlink which is a link button and then the image button so basically uh, the difference is about the uh, appearance of these buttons but uh, the functionality will remain same 
as this one is looking like a normal button this one is like a looking like a hyperlink and this one is an image button so you can just design any si sort of image and uh, you can apply that out here in the button so here you can see in image button there's a property of image url i'll just come to this inside images i have a login.png so here you can see now this is an image button when i will click over this uh, ultimately i will get the method out here that is the image button click all right similarly i will do the double click over the button and the link button and they will give me the similar functionality now next one is the hyperlink control basically the difference between the hyperlink and the link, link button is that in link button it will do a complete post back if you want to navigate from one page to another first of all it will execute whatever you want to do inside this function and then it will take you to the next page but here in the hyperlink basically it can directly take you to the other page without the post back with this current page so for that you can simply come here and there is something called the navigate url property that will be at the end and here you can set the particular page where you want to jump after clicking on this hyperlink like here i can also set to any outside uh, link like www.tutorialspoint.com so and here is the text property click for tutorials all right so as soon as i click this page will not do the post back but rather it will just be posted and the next page will be on our screen but here first of all the complete post back process will be done and later we will be going on the next page so let's see the execution here like as soon as i click over this button it will take me to the target url after that we have the option of checkbox for making the multiple choice each checkbox would be having the text property inside which you can set like for example here is the text property like choice 1 similarly for the remaining two choice 2 and choice 3 so as soon as you will click these checkbox will be checked the most important property of this property these text boxes the most important property for these check boxes are the checked property which is of boolean type so here you can see there is a check property which is false by default you can make it true if you want your check box to be checked by default or if you want you can also do that at the runtime now similarly we do have a control called radio button but generally we use this radio button for the single selection but by default you will be able to choose the multiple values like let's say option 1 and option 2 is the text for this but ultimately when you will be working with the radio button they would be having one more property that is the group name for all the radio buttons in out of which you want to make a single selection you can just part just give us same group name like here i will give the name option and exactly same name will be given to this second or all the radio buttons that is option so when i will execute this you may see like only one radio button will be selected while in the case of checkbox we can obviously make the multiple selections so let's move on to the next control that is the calendar control so for calendar i have already taken this one and for showing the date i will take the label control so let's add a label right after the calendar and let's remove the text property of it and make it blank and as i said it's a good practice to make a label for all the uh, change the id of all the controls so lbl underscore chosen date all right so as soon as a user will select a date from the calendar what i want like in the label i want to show that particular date so for that calendar one dot selected date dot to string 
all right and after that if you want to show the date in a particular format you can simply do that by dd mm y y y y that's the format which i chose here so let's execute this so as soon as i will choose any particular date you see that one is selected and the date is shown here itself all right so this is about the calendar control and finally let's talk about one more important control that is the literal so for that let's take couple of more controls that is one label one literal which we are covering and one button to check the difference between the label and literal along with that so basically the primary use of both the controls that is label and literal is to show the text over the web page but literal is used when you want to show the text in the plain text format at the runtime means if you at the runtime you want to add a text on your web page then you can go for the literal control for example let's make the text of this particular label also blank so for now the label and literal both are not containing any text so let's run this one and you can see there is nothing over the browser let's come to the page source and here you can see for label one there is a span tag all right which will show the text out here but where i have placed the literal there is no tag and nothing is rendered for that one all right but even if i will set any text at the run time so let's click the button here and here what i'll do literal one dot text is equal to literal text and for label it will be label text all right so let's re-execute this one so obviously like before we will not be having anything between the span opening and closing tag and similarly i don't have anything out here as well but as soon as i will click here now i got the text but if i'll see the source here you can see this is not a plain text this is rendered inside the span tag rather here only a blank text has been added so even if i want i can put the any particular tag inside it to give it any style because it will be rendered as it is whatever you will put inside it so whenever at the runtime you want to put the text performance wise using a literal will always gives a performance benefit because it will not do any rendering of control and no control will be loaded unwantedly over the web page so these are few of the standard controls which we have learned